You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for August 9th, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where Joaquin Castro's list brings all the trolls to the yard, it's the professional left with Drift Class and Blue Gal. record this podcast in two separate rooms i'm in the front room and he's in the back room of our bungalow we're, and the west uh, wing of the house and the east wing of the house it's quite a <laughs> jaunt between the two but no, we manage we're about 12 yeah. feet apart we're in two different congressional districts frankly it's <laughs> this is a little house but it's a little uh, house yeah, in fact yeah. when i got this house uh drift glass and i were not married and no. uh i was not sure that i i I didn't know what was going to happen with our relationship at that point, but uh-huh. it did a- appear to me at the time that this house would always and forever be too small for you because you're so tall and it's, it you've, you've lived here for a few years now. I've so. been here a while and it's, it's a, uh... Honey, the world is too small for me. I know. Well, so, he's, Drift Class is six foot eight, so it is yeah. really. Uh, he knows. He knows where the low bridges are in this house, including the basement where you were a. I wore a bike helmet in the basement. A bike helmet I do. in the basement. I, and, I, I, <laughs> and you know what? I have used that bike helmet in the basement many times. Yeah. I have clipped my head many, many times on the beams and the ductwork. It's, and it's so a forth. low ceiling down there. But it is. anyway, it is, yeah. uh, it's been a long, long, hard week it has it's been starting bad with and just bad. two very horrific shootings uh-huh. last weekend and then turmoil and and i don't know how you feel about it drift class to me this week felt like a real tipping point yeah it felt this felt like the the week of the women's march in mm-hmm. a lot of ways yeah when something some very clear line was crossed that you only see in retrospect Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that this oh no we're done we're done now we're done we're done playing nice we're done pretending these people are decent we're done you know playing patty cake with both siderists who want everyone to be blamed on both sides for every republican atrocity we're just done and it felt like a whole lot of people catching up with where the left has been for a long Mm -hmm, time mm -hmm. Um, and saying, oh, hell yeah. No, no, we're not doing this anymore. Especially, frankly, women. Yep. Uh, And uh, especially um, members of the Latino community. Yeah. Who have been written, I I was reading a couple of articles, who had largely been written out of the story um, in El Paso. Yeah. The story was about the shooter and the carnage and the rage and the and Trump and white supremacy, and that this was the largest, you know, mass murder of Latinos in American history. And, and that the shooter history. targeted the yes. community and the race of the people in that community. Yes. And that's something that we can't forget. It no. was a hate crime. It was. It was. Um, Charlie Pierce, I, I agree with him firmly. This was uh, we have reached the point where you can have a one person lynch mob. Yeah. And that's yeah. what this was. And if a lot of people, other people, you know, you had a lot of other casualties along the sides. Well, that's just the way things go. Mm-hmm. When you're, you know, when you're carrying out the president's directives to turn back the invasion yep. from the South. And, exactly and the rhetor- that's exactly what the rhetoric of this campaign and this party is about. Mm-hmm. And it is and, not and just not Trump. Stop. It is the party. It is the Republican Party's position that uh, immigration is an invasion right and from the south of the border is and the an reason invasion. this is bad mm-hmm. and the reason the invasion from canada or norway or england or we, swedish, we never hear about, swedish bathing suit models no, yeah right we never hear about people who are here undocumented from those countries no. because this is a uh, driven by a white supremacist ideology right. from the top right through the Republican Party. And if you are still a Republican, you are either a racist white supremacist or you're really cool with it Mm -hmm. because they're cutting your taxes. Right. Or you're just an idiot. Yeah. But, you know, they've pretty much gathered the worst people in the country into one party. And this week felt like the great clarification. Yeah, I think that's how I feel about it is that 
now that it is targeting with ammo i mean all of the evil <laughs> all of the really bad things about republican ideology came together right, right? racism they did. They did. uh xenophobia uh, toxic masculinity, guns, yeah. and gun, guns for everybody. Lots of lots yeah. of guns that shoot huge amounts of incredibly lethal um, uh, battlefield level mm -hmm. ammo mm -hmm. at a lot of people in a hurry. Um, all of which are things Republicans rejoice uh, on, yeah. uh, get off on. This is this is their thing. This is their all their ideologies. You're absolutely right. All of their their data points came together in one moment, and this is what it looks like. Yeah. And it and really then, is. And then you have the so-called president doing a thumbs up campaign pose with right. the baby that was orphaned yeah. during the shooting. Which and, reminded me nothing so much as Saddam Hussein posing with child hostages. Yeah, yeah. You know, because, you know, tyrants love their human shields. And so we're just going to get that baby out here. And, and it was just, it was the creepiest fucking thing. Yeah. I mean, really, it was just... This is just I, well because I none at, of the adult victims wanted to meet him. No, and so the no. the Trump supporting uncle of this baby, and mm -hmm. I'm very grateful that this baby has a family. And yes. unlike yes. the children of those arrested by ICE around the same time mm -hmm. at the yep. food processing plant, the Coke fo food processing plant in Mississippi. You know, this baby has a supportive family around him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we we've separate we are we are separating families again, not at the border, but in Mississippi by arresting uh, workers uh, and, and mm -hmm. doing raids. And it is Nearly Gestapo like 700. Tactics. Yep, it is. And I looked at the at the creature leering out of that picture. Mm -hmm. um, just this dead smile on his mm -hmm. face, this you know, apprentice end of episode smile on his yes. face. And I don't recognize anything human in it's, there at all. It's, I it's, this is he's, a, he's deeply a beast. Ill. He's a monster. He's deeply ill. And, and his he's, wife tweeted this picture. That's where this picture yes. comes from. It's her Twitter stream. Yeah. So. And if you're uh, cool yeah. with that, if that's okay, or, or if you're hiding out in the Fox News bunker, pretending that, you know, Antifa is yeah, the real Well, problem. and there's that. And um, I think that's a lot of what you and I see around here in, in Springfield, Illinois, it is, is it's, 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 is. it is self-justification times seven times seven, you know, it's, it's, uh, well, both sides and Antifa and Ellie Mistal said pitchforks and torches. So, you know, it's the violent left and shouldn't everyone on the left be arrested for being so evil and violent. Uh, well, I didn't mention, I mean, we might as well just jump into it if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. That our local newspaper, this is, I, I in my notes, I have um, um, David Brooks. This is not a David Brooks post, but David Brooks now more than ever. Mm -hmm. uh, because from the mainstream media and the national media right down to our local newspaper, this week proved how critically important the both sides do it lie is to the right. They cannot survive without it because when everything goes horribly wrong, when the shit boils over, this is where right. they dive for cover. This is straight. They always go straight to the both sides argument. And if you are in charge of tending that argument, of propping it up, of strengthening it, which is what the mainstream media does every fucking day, then you are providing shelter, aid, and comfort to the mm -hmm. enemy. Mm -hmm. And you're yep. doing it on purpose. And this is where Tom Brokaw went there this week. Oh, and my Hugh, gosh. And Hugh Hewitt did it this week. Donna fucking Brazil was on Fox News just going, well, sure, Donald Trump talks shit. But, you know, Joaquin Castro published a list. So everyone should tone it fucking down. It's only and when our local we paper, push back that that message right. comes out. It is only and when, when we punch black back, and brown and women, black and brown people and women push back and say, fuck no, that, mm -hmm. oh, we need to really turn down the temperature comes out. And last week I did a whole riff that I'm not going to repeat on David Brooks simply writing the entire Republican Party out of existence. Right. There is no Republican Party. There are pluralists and there are fascists and terrorists, but there's not left and right. There's not Republicans and Democrats. And there's Democrats and there's Trump. Not an entire party behind him. He's just all by himself out there. And the reason I point this out to the point of nausea is that this is true all the way down. So yeah. our local paper, which is a gatehouse, you know, shithole that employs 14 people and it's being stripped for parts and you know it's not going to last another year or two. They're squeezing every last nickel out of the place 
by pandering to the largely right wing, largely octogenarian, largely Fox News viewing Trump supporters that live all around us. That's the people who pay their subscription. That's who puts food on their table. So Gatehouse Media put their official imprimatur on a an, an editorial in which they blamed everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. who do they call out? Well, it's real important that we not have partisanship. It's the current divisive partisan political climate that's the problem, Blue Gal. Partisan. And they use the word we 12 times. They didn't use the word Republican once, didn't use the word right. Democrat once. Um, I pointed out that there's this cool site called the Congressional Record where if you're an actual journalist, you could, you know, look shit up and actually tell us who is only offering prayers and thoughts and who's actually talking about guns. But apparently that's too much for the gatehouse media people. Instead, mm -hmm. they talk about the senseless slaughter that outrages all of us, no matter the party we belong to. And far too often, our elected leaders are mute about the president's attacks. And finally, all of us should demand that our elected representatives find the political will and the courage to find these answers. Fuck wow. you. Fuck you. Wow. This is what we're talking about. It's everywhere. This both sides shit, this place where cowards and traitors hide is is part of the media. They built it and they're maintaining it because, man, once that disappears, if that collapses, there's no more Tom Brokaw because he's out of a fucking job. Chuck Todd's out of a job. Half the people in the media are out of a job. And there's no place left for the fascists to hide. There's mm -hmm. nobody's going to buy the next time there's a Republican atrocity. Tucker Carlson running around with his hair on fire talking about the, the violent left. Right. The people in Fox News will still buy that because they are lost. They're dead from the neck up and we're never getting them back. But everyone else will know, oh, that's that lie that, that, that right-wing violent assholes tell themselves to justify their right-wing violent asshole behavior. And they don't do that now because the New York Times and the Washington Post all the way down to the State Journal Register is, are devoted to giving aid and comfort to the enemy by giving them a place to hide. And that's why we've, I've been writing about this now for almost 15 years. It's not getting any better. They're getting more desperate because it's clearly a punchline now among the left, among the good guys. This whole both sides shit is clearly a joke now. It's just, right. a, it, we just rattle it off like, oh, it's Donna Brazil being a Fox News token liberal. She's, she's their Alan Combs now. She's, but, but she's, let's connect that to um, Brittany Kaiser and the Great Hack because they yes. think it's the same oh, thing. Wonderful. Wonderful. Highly recommend. Thank you for dragging me to see that, honey. Oh, yeah. All yeah. The way on to the Netflix. Living room. It's on Netflix. All the way to the living room yeah. to watch the Great Hack. All the way to our uh, West Wing, you know, it's across the house. Which, interestingly, I've noticed uh, people uh, on Twitter, right wingers on Twitter, uh, demanding that people. Uh, delete their Netflix account uh -huh. because of something on the Dear White People show. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's clearly to me, having watched The Great Hack, an effort to get people not to watch The Great Hack, Yeah, which is about Cambridge Analytica and the Trump campaign and the Brexit campaign. And it is not too long. It's not two hours long. I think it's no. an hour and a half long. And it's very watchable. It's very, it reminded me a lot of uh, the, the Big, big short. short. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's easy to watch, easy to understand what's happening. Uh, they put personalities and uh, individuals in the story. So it's a story being told rather than a uh, detailed outline of computer hacking. It's yeah, really it's not, it's about not a slideshow people. about no, hacking. No, no. It's really, they, they make it a, a drama that is watchable and understandable and uh, easy to digest, mm -hmm. but also critically important because your data is being stolen your friend's data is then being stolen it's being it's it's a very very valuable commodity and uh it is not yours anymore it belongs to big tech and mm -hmm. it is being used by evil people to put evil people in power this is why ron fournier and Matthew Dowd and the rest of these fuckers who are talking about uh, both sides are awful. Hillary and, and Trump are equally bad. Yeah. I'm voting the, for a third the party. Grand, I'm going the to, grand duopoly. Yeah, yeah, the great duopoly. The, the corrupt duopoly. Yeah. Bring corrupt the whole duopoly. system down. We need to disrupt. They all might as well have been working for Donald Trump. Right. And that's what made me so fucking mad because we could see it happening in real time. They were they took the, the, the Cambridge Analytica lie, hook, line, and sinker, and used their massive media platforms to convince enough people that there was no point in voting at all. Everything was fucking corrupt. 
just stay home, which is exactly what... Or just vote what, third party to, yeah, or, to disrupt the cor- right. duopoly. Yes, well, then you right. can go home and call yourself a good person because you didn't right. support the corrupt duopoly. And now, <laughs> this week, this very week, Matthew Dowd is out saying, you know what we don't to do enough of? We don't hold enough people accountable <laughs> who didn't mention race during the last election, how racist uh-huh. Republicans are and Trump uh-huh. voters are. Like, uh-huh. yeah, we should... Jesus, that would have been a really good thing to do. I do recommend it. I don't want to spoil it any more than I already have. Go right. go see it. It's on Netflix. It's called The Great Hack. I, I do want to underscore that she's there's a much there are much larger villains at play here. Yeah. Uh, because yeah. one of the quotes from the, the thing is that data is now more valuable than oil. Right. Um, right. Yeah. And that the, the big players, the Facebooks are really the monsters behind this. Thing. Oh, yeah. They, the big they, money. The, and, and it's money. It's just it's money. and this is why Donna Brazil. I'm not surprised that she's on Fox playing no. the both sides game. No. It pays to do that. It does. It gets you it a house. It gets you a paycheck. It puts well, a roof over your head. Yeah. The, the brutal fact is we have a plenty of liberal billionaires. We have Tom Steyer who's willing to set fire to giant piles of money to mm-hmm. get himself on the debate stage. Liberals do not, rich liberals will not invest in the basic infrastructure of media and messaging and change. Well, and now they just won't fucking do it. There's pushback in Congress about that mm-hmm. and AOC and her team mm-hmm. are are going against unpaid internships and saying, yeah. you know, exposure doesn't pay the bills. No, it and, doesn't. Uh, trust me. <laughs> that, <laughs> trust, us. trust us. Oh, yeah, we'll we'll let you write for us for exposure. I mean, uh-huh. we fall into that trap of Crooks and Liars because we don't have any money to pay people. Right, right. And if we had a, a billionaire angel investor, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, Breitbart does. That's the thing. Breitbart That's does. The thing. So, That's, just like Fox News. Yep. Rupert Murdoch is willing to put in a shitload of money uh, to, to create the weekly standard. You know how long the weekly standard was around? Decades. It's yeah. because Rupert Murdoch gave Bill Crystal a big sack of money and said, go hire a bunch of people, a bunch of conservative writers, and make me a, a respectable conservative journal. Right. And he bought, you know, and he then bought the people Sun-Times. from that magazine can be on TV promoting exactly. my ideology. And yeah. they can be on yeah. my TV station because yeah. now I'm going to have a TV station. Right. And it is maddening to me that all of the things that I see and hear on social media about what liberals should do and what liberals should take on is like, really? Because you know what money buys? It buys capacity and time. Mm-hmm. It buys capacity and time. And and every liberal I know is scrambling around trying to cover 10 issues or 10 things that they should be focusing on one. Right down the street from us, there's the Illinois Policy Institute which has plenty of money to crank out crackpot right-wing white papers and crackpot right-wing. They ne- they're never broke. They have plenty of staff. And it is, if liberalism finally fails in this country, if the back is finally broken and this country has to rebuild itself over the next 50 years from, you know, drag itself out from the rubble of what Republicans have done to it, the big untold story will be rich liberals are too fucking cheap to pay to save their own country. They had vanity projects and they had a bunch of other things, but they wouldn't invest money in their own media like the right did. The only reason that the right wing wins elections is they have their own fucking TV network and their own radio network and their own church. And all of those things cost money and it has to be patient money. They have to wait 10, 15, 20 years for the payoff. And I just don't see anyone on the left willing to do that. I see a lot of rich liberals on social media willing to exhort the the peons, the folks in the field like you and I, mm-hmm. to just work harder and do more and 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 get angry and, and protest and march, which are all great things. But if you want a megaphone big enough to shout down Fox News, you have to pay for it. Yeah. Well, and I think that's the problem. And that's the thing that, that Elizabeth Warren has said, which is let's get the money out of politics. But first, oh. we have to play on a fair playing field. And so, she, you know, she's she's willing when she's on a playing field with other Democrats yeah. to say no PAC money. But when you're fighting Donald Trump and seeing that he is, has, what, a 641 page uh, list from the FEC of incorrect and uh, not acceptable donations mm-hmm. coming into his campaign. And then he's he's getting two hundred and fifty thousand dollar per ticket fundraisers with Mr. Soul Cycle. Yeah in the Hamptons yeah. and you're going to fight on that playing field with that kind of money, you're not going to be able to win. Well, and, and we are fighting a war on two fronts. The, the mm-hmm. number one is the, the Fox news machine, which is all well-documented and the hate radio. Right. That's all uh, everyone knows about that. But right. 
this week was the week Joaquin Castro published a list of yep. the of the major donors to Donald Trump in the El Paso area. That's all he in did. In his district, yep. the ones that maxed out. Right. Yes. And it, he, he wasn't going for the little $5 no. donator. He wasn't. He, yes. He didn't publish their children's names or their home no. addresses or their phone number. Right. He didn't dox them, which is, you know, what every concern. This, and believe me, this freaked the right out. Because yeah, you're they, tearing, you're tearing the clan hood they, off. They don't want to take responsibility for backing fascists. They want the benefits, yeah. but they don't want their neighbors looking at him funny, which is exactly what, yeah. what he's talking about. He said, look, these guys. Well, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, Dirk West, but how many listeners do we have who have written to us and said, I live in a red area. Yep. I cannot have a carry bumper sticker no. on my car no. because my husband will lose business. Oh, yeah. I will. I, my daughters will not be invited to babysit. If I even have, you know, anything resembling I support Democrats on my car. And that has happened to um, us. Yeah. In a roundabout way where we live. I mean, I know some some uh, well off liberals in town. Uh, They're very nice people. Um, They they promote good causes, but they're very clear that the reason they can get away with it is they're independently wealthy. They right. don't have to work right. for anybody to get their cause done. And if you do, you'd better, you damn well better shut your fucking mouth and not take a position on anything that contradicts the five families, the conservative right. families who run We're the town. All conservative real estate mm-hmm. agents. Yes. But, right. But this, so this right. was, this, this was him publishing public records. <laughs> Literally, yeah. I you can look yeah. this up. I looked it up. I've looked up people in my neighborhood. You know this. I, we did, didn't it, we? We did. So it's a lot of fun. You can play. It's a game you can play at home. Um, yeah. And that, but we the two front war we're fighting is number one on the right, the screaming, yelling lunatic right who has their own media complex and book publishing houses, and they're just fully self contained. But then there's Maggie Haberman in the New York Times who lost her shit because. Joaquin Castro opened the books, already public books, on which businesses are bankrolling the American fascist party. Right. And and racism. A reporter, a reporter at the New York Times freaked out because he published publicly available information on Twitter. It seems to me that a certain reporter at the New York Times published Clinton Foundation donors in 2016. Yeah, and emails and WikiLeaks shit and, you know, the, and the Pentagon Papers and everything to do with Watergate. Why is it that this one leak, this one leak of publicly available information completely made Maggie Haberman shit herself and said that well, I've gone too far? Well, I think she knows what it is. She knows that a substantial fraction, not an overwhelming percent, but some some fraction of New York Times readers and New York Times psyche is is about never, ever hold Republicans accountable in a freestanding way. It always has to be both sides. It always has to be both sides. And, and you can't just put a list out there and say, these are the people that support the fascists. Because who knows what might happen? Yeah, I might stop buying oil from Joe because I found that the Joe gave $2,500 to, to Donald Trump. That is exactly what, what, what may very well happen. But the fact that they're so fucking terrified of yeah. making the right angry, that they will immediately leap to the conclusion that publishing a list of just names and donations, which once again is publicly available information, would make a New York Times reporter lose their mind, is maybe a clue as to why the New York Times is so fucked up. Uh, you know what? The flip side of that is Beto O'Rourke made himself a hero for 15 minutes this week. He said the F word. He did. To he a said reporter the about his question. I was impressed right. with, with that. I was impressed with was. Beto O'Rourke all week. Uh, yeah. He's he's probably, he should run for the Senate in Texas again. I he doubt should. that he's yep. going to be a presidential candidate, our, our nominee. I just doubt that he is. I'm, I'm not against yeah. him. But no, uh, no matter who. It, it, it's a study in contrast between how Beto O'Rourke handled himself in El Paso this week compared to how Donald Trump handled himself in El Paso this week. Yes, Beto O'Rourke yes. suspended his campaign, went home, got together with his wife, went to speak to victims and to the to a community that is distraught and didn't talk about himself and didn't talk about his campaign mm-hmm. and didn't talk about vote for me. His crowd or his size. Crowd size. Or his crowd fucking size? crowd size. No. He talked no. about healing. He talked about mm-hmm. justice. And he he embraced his community he went home he talked to them he 
hugged people. Uh, he handed his cell phone to a man who was crying and needed to get in touch with somebody. Say, here, call them. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it's yeah. he helped. And uh, it was a time for uh, the mainstream media to turn their attention to him because he's yes. there where there is news. And uh-huh. they proceeded to ask him really stupid questions. Like, well, you don't think Trump's a racist, do you? What the fuck, man? Yes, I do. Of yeah. course I do. Yes. Why are you why and are you trying really... to pretend that this this is my least favorite word these days in media? <laughs> Controversy. Let's let's talk yeah. about this is very controversial. No, it's not. It's not controversial at mm-hmm. all. Controversy means mm-hmm. that the vast majority of people have different opinions about something. The vast majority of people right. First of all, we found out this week via a poll in Morning Consult that the vast majority of people, including Republicans, would like to see assault rifles banned. We've never even tried that in this. Oh, yeah, we did. And that's right. And then uh, George W. Bush let that lapse. And the number 55 percent of Republicans and, of course, 83 or 84 percent of Democrats would like to see these weapons simply removed from the shelves. Just ban them. But but what about if we just ban violent uh, video displays? displays? <laughs> yeah. What about no. we do that? We'll, re- we'll meet boycott, you halfway. Boycott Walmart, Walmart we'll is halfway. trending, uh, is the number one trending thing right now, boycott Walmart. And right in time for mm-hmm. back to school. So uh, mm-hmm. good for that. Let's let's do it. I'm all for that. So uh, let's, let's go down our list a little bit because there's a lot to talk about. I also want to remind people, yes. we are still, this is, this is uh, our 500 and... Uh, six episode. This is our 506th episode in which we have been completely unsponsored by the New York Times. <laughs> 506 realize, in a row. Do you realize our eighth wedding anniversary is in 10 days? Holy oh crap. What? What? Yeah. Well, yes, I realize that, Blue Gal. Yes, I, I know you do. Because <laughs> you talked about it with me last night. You're like, what do, you want, what do you want to do for your anniversary? Oh, okay. I think, I think right. we worked something out. I think we know what I think we do. worked out. I think we have yeah. a plan yeah. for how uh, to will, celebrate. Will it interrupt our podcast schedule? No, uh, five hundred six <laughs> episodes. Didn't no, podcast schedule. Wedding, surgery, all kinds Wedding, of stuff has never. Surgery, so. medical emergencies. We we love talking with you guys. So, well, by the way, I do want to uh, put out a shout out to the listener who sent us a bat net last year. We needed um, it this week. We needed it this week. We we got a, another bat. <laughs> <laughs> we have just a little baby bat in our yeah. dining room. Yeah. Neither. Just hanging there, just sleeping he like was a sleeping. Like a yeah. But... And when the cats were like, dude, are, why do you, how do you not see this? This is the most amazing thing I've <laughs> ever way, seen. The cats why are you were not... just staring up at the ceiling. Oh, I couldn't figure God. out what was going on. Mm-hmm. And the gypsy the, woman was right. The yeah. top of the curtain rod was this little baby bat. And I didn't. Bat. I don't like bats in my house. No. So. We no. found we found the bat net. Thank you very much for sending the bat. And it's Someone sends it's a, a bat lovely net. thing because it catches the bat safely, and right. we're able to deposit it outdoors. Yes, and free. Go pee not, free. Not harm anybody, but uh, yeah, the the cats would love to have another bat. <laughs> I was like, sure, you know, sure. But neither rain nor sleet nor surgery nor anniversaries nor bat invasions right. will stop this podcast. That's true. Um, even though the New York Times refuses to sponsor us, <laughs> we're still going forward with the plan. We're still doing the big plan. Yeah, the plan so, is a, a podcast every week. I also want to mention, I want to thank Tammy, our angel yes, nerd. Oh, she, gosh, yeah. For my birthday, our anniversary, laminated a gi- giant uh, cornfield resistance poster for us. She did. And it's fantastic. And we will definitely be using it at protests and marches around the country. <laughs> well, um, she also she also said in, in big, bright letters that... This is for your video cast when you do See? that, right? Uh-huh. Right. Hint, uh-huh. Nudge, nudge, this nudge. It's going to go in the background of your video cast. Hint, hint, hint. Okay. Nobody wants to see this guy. <laughs> Nobody wants to see this guy. Well, maybe Middle Child and I will do something together again. Sure. We did something a sure. while back. Uh, and then um, I also want to thank the podcast listener who sent us some science fiction posters. Yes, yes. This is uh, not excluding all the other lovely people who sent us all kinds of And people have sent us all kinds things. of gifts and things. And we, we have some books to talk about later in the month and a mm-hmm. bunch of other things, good things to talk about. But for now, those two things, posters this week, poster week, we appreciate it. Uh, mm-hmm. Thank you, both of you, for sending those. Uh, let's get back to our list of things to talk about. Uh Christopher Gribbs, a soybean farmer from Ohio whose family owns and operates 560 acres of land, told CNBC on Thursday that he won't be voting for President Donald Trump again in the upcoming 2020 oh, oh. election. 
He's losing the Ohio farm vote. Mm -hmm. That's just a shame. And Trump also bragged about he has he does have a fan though. He bragged about his new very beautiful letter from Kim Jong Un. He did, and that Kim tells him that he wasn't happy with the war games of South Korea, and so Donald Trump agreed they shouldn't happen, and maybe South Korea should pay the U.S. Give us some money. Give us some of that money. <sighs> uh, Moscow Mitch, by the way, is having a really bad week. Moscow uh, Mitch is having a very bad week. Just a real bad week. Um, he is now occupying my old cell in Twitter jail, which I think is pretty exciting. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Did you leave him anything under the mattress? <laughs> I, I left that carving on the on the beam above yeah. the door, like mm -hmm. in um, um, uh, uh, Shawshank Redemption. Why yeah. can't I think of it? It's got its own network now. It just plays 24-7. <laughs> um, yes, uh, he complained that the protesters outside of house were making serious calls to violence, uh, which meant they were calling him a stupid shithead outside of his house, which is just incredibly mean. Now, protests are so mean, Blue Gal. Uh, because he wouldn't consider any bills passed by the House at all to strengthen anything to do with gun sales or background checks or anything. Because well, but he, in addition to being, put, he also put his campaign put uh, tombstones for AOC yeah. and socialism and Democrats and and gun bills and uh, all the other bills. They had tombstones for right. uh, the Grim Reaper, thinking that was cute. And they had a, a bunch of his high school boys in their Teen Mitch t-shirts groping and choking a cardboard cutout of AOC because that's just – that's on brand for, for, for Massacre Republican Mitch. Republican men. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I just – it's like, wow. I mean you're, you you got to learn to sort of um, play your fuck-ups out over time, Mitch. <laughs> all in one we, week. Yeah. All in one week really kind of – oh, shit. This guy's still in the office and he, he this guy really is the problem. This guy is the – this guy is the guy with his boot on the throat of democracy. Yep. This is the guy who, even if Joe Biden wins and gets into office and says, you know, this filibuster thing is a sacred, ancient institution. I don't want to touch it. Joe Biden's presidency will be over. Right. Because Mitch McConnell will just choke it to death. Right. Using That's the same great. No filibu choke. filibuster isn't over. It'll take 60 yeah. votes to get anything, and you never will. Because I won't. anything that will get 60 votes, I just won't let on the floor of the Senate. Yeah. That's the strategy. That's how it so, works. Uh, yeah. So come on there, Joe. Uh, I know the Senate was great back in the olden, olden, olden days. When he had, Maybe, a, when he had one of those brick cellular phones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And had a, had a young lady who would dial it for him. <laughs> Guess who I'm calling you on? And then, you know, it, the charge would last eight minutes and it was, you know, oh, very dangerous to your health to yeah. get it too close to your head, which is why he had to have hair plugs because he lost all his hair with his big brick cell phone. I mean, that's just true. That's just science. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, Ice, as I, we mentioned. There was a resignation today. Yes, there were two, actually. Oh, Matt Gebert? Oh, no, that, I'm thinking of a different one. You go ahead with Matt Gebert. Matt Gebert was a foreign affairs officer assigned to the Bureau of Energy Resources, who also ran a Washington, D.C. area chapter of a white nationalist organization. Oh, no, I hate it when that happens. Oh, no. He, he yeah, hosted no, white nationalists the, um... at his home, and he published white nationalist propaganda online. That Joaquin yeah. Castro must yeah. have published his name. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's really a four he's really a four tool player. He he publishes them, he broadcasts them. He has them in his home. I assume he sleeps with them. I don't really know, but he seems to be really into white nationalism and racism, which is why I'm sure he got a job in the Trump yeah. administration. No, this week the deputy director Susan Gordon yes. of the National Intelligence Service resigned and will step down August 15th on the same day her boss is quitting. Dan quotes is leaving. And it's not because she wants to pursue other opportunities. <laughs> and it's not because it's because shit, these people want to do things their way. Fine. Do it your way. I'm out. Yep. And that should really scare the shit out yeah, of everyone. Wonka because, said her letter was uh, a real fuck you to Donald Trump. Yeah, it was. It absolutely was. The, the other guy who's leaving is the main department of justice official who was responsible for the Trump administration, uh, trying and failing to put a citizenship question on the census. Mm -hmm. He is resigning to spend more time with his family while, quote, discerning next steps, which I think is like a an emo band from the 90s, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Discerning next steps. They, they just play like one lute and they, they talk about their feelings a uh -huh. lot. Um, but yeah, no, a lot of people are quitting. Really awful people are quitting because they were unable to fulfill Donald Trump's wish to put through an entire fascist agenda in one term. And other ones are quitting because Donald Trump is getting way too close to being able to put through a fascist agenda in one term. So right. it's just the people right. in the middle, you know, the Boltons and the Millers who are sticking around. 
By the way, if you'd like to catch up with any of these people, um, in October, just in time for my birthday, the Washington Examiner <laughs> is holding its political summit uh, in Georgia, I believe. Beautiful time of yeah. year in Georgia. It's going to have Sarah Huckabee Sanders, John Kelly, Marsha Blackburn, Scott Walker, Ken Starr, Devin Nunez, Kevin McCarthy, Carl Rove, Dave Perdue, Byron York, Fred Barnes, Selena Zito, Tim Carey, a cast of thousands. Oh, my goodness. How could you say no to a, to a sweet, sweet weekend like that? Listen to these people tell I, you. I tweeted that out and said, you know, it, it's uh, Georgia in October telling Dante's fifth circle of hell to eat yeah. your heart out. <laughs> oh, my beer. Yeah. Oh, my very and, large and, beer. Uh, we, we have a, a pool going. And I don't know how we're going to judge this pool, but over at the Crooks and Liars staff, we have a pool going as to who will tell the biggest lie oh. at the Washington Examiner Political Summit. My money's on Marsha Blackburn. I'm, I'm going with, I got to put my money on Zito. I, no, is it, is it? Yeah, she's pretty, she's pretty much, yeah, is it, huge liar. Is it, the, is it just a lie or is it a lie that is sort of the distance the lie covers between the truth and reality? I don't know. I don't know how we're going to judge yeah. this. It's no. it, the headline making a lie, I think, is what we're looking for. Yeah, it's, you know? it'll be a, a real team effort, I'm sure. Um, but yes, yeah, it, it sure is good to know that uh, Scott Walker has work. Oh, yeah, and always will. <laughs> and always will. This is wing not welfare. Absolutely. It, it absolutely is. Uh, this week, the National Rifle Association warned Donald Trump against endorsing background checks for gun sales. Well, and then uh, Donald Trump came out and said, well, you know, we're working with the NRA on possible oh, legislation. Oh, okay. Why would you come out and say that? Because it is – shit's getting so bad for them yeah. that mm-hmm. they have – what they're really saying – here, let me translate it for you. We're <laughs> going to give you the absolute minimal, shitty, tiny little bit we're, that we can possibly get away with, probably with a poison pill inside of it, and then throw up our hands and say anything more than that is socialism. And, yeah, and, and crazy and left people don't want to do anything. Put a poison except- pill in and then blame Democrats for right. not voting for it. Yeah, and yeah. It's it's sad that we know how this play will end, but we've been to this theater a million times and seen this show a million times. So that's the way she goes. Um, yeah. Would you like to continue, my dear? Sure. Uh, Lindsey Graham promises to repeal Obamacare if Trump and the Republicans win in 2020. Oh, Does Lindsay. he want to lose? Oh, Lindsey. Oh, Lindsey. Because uh, he, he was talking about... Uh, you know, Social Security and Medicare and how we have to, quote unquote, fix those with Laura Ingram about two weeks ago. Well, and I heard a. Oh, please go ahead. I just wonder if he want if his way out is to lose his seat. Uh, well, I heard an alternate theory, uh-huh. which is this is remember, this is all just speculation. Right. Now, we tend to speculate about Republican motives and methods and oh, directions. And, and they based take on generally. what you're seeing. Yeah. 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 And that's, you know, in case uh, Donald Trump's head explodes. Yeah. Um, just the amount of lies and KFC he's stuffing into his face mm-hmm. finally becomes too much. And he uh, is medically unable to form full sentences mm-hmm. and is unable to run. Then Lindsey Graham can swing into action. Oh, I see. As the as the as the logical number two guy, because it, it nobody's going to vote for Mike Pence. Right. Mike Pence. Nobody. It's, it would be like running. I don't know. Dan Quayle <laughs> dipped in Jerry Falwell's ass juice. Right. <laughs> it's it'd be like the worst possible case of, and he has no charisma. Yeah. He's a horrible person. He sounds like he's reading from a teleprompter at all yeah. times. Yeah. Um, it's just, it, he's, he is just there in case something happens and we need somebody to come in and, and fulfill the Mercer's agenda. Um, but, you know, it's, it's not the, I don't know why Lindsey Graham is doing what he's doing other than the fact that he lives where he lives and he wants to please the um, gas sipping, toe picking idiots yeah. who think Donald Trump is the second yeah. coming. Yeah. And that's, that, it's literally that. Lindsey Graham doesn't have a soul. No, he has no, no conscience. I don't, I, he's just I don't king. think he does. I think he really just is a and he'll, auto, automaton he's a for this party and this ideology. Yeah. All right. Trump without he's evidence. I, you know, you really don't need to put those yeah. words in there. Yeah. <laughs> No. Accused Google no. of, quote, very illegal, unquote, acts to subvert his 2016 presidential campaign. And that's why he wasn't elected president, right? right. Uh, and sad. he'll be watching the company very closely ahead of the 2020 election. Okay. I'll be watching the Google. I'll be watching the Google with my, with my eyes. I'll watch the Google. Trump's on vacation uh, now, McKay, but he's still watching the Google and the Fox. He watches, he watches, he watches everything yeah. all the time. You know, he's Cerberus. He can watch everything all the time. Um, 
Andrew McCabe filed a lawsuit against the FBI and the Justice Department, alleging that he was illegally demoted and fired in retaliation for not being sufficiently loyal to Trump in any other universe. This is just a layup. This is a one-day yeah. court case. It's like, yep, here are your damages. You get your job back, or or you can have behind what's behind yeah. door number three. Um, so, but suing the the uh, Justice Department and the FBI is is pretty oh smart. yeah, that's how you get discovery. Uh, yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, the Trump campaign paid for more than 2,000 Facebook ads this year that included the word invasion in relation to immigration, and they have no intention of stopping. Again, go watch The Great Hack on Netflix, and hack. you'll learn more about Facebook than you want to know, but you need to know it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, July was the hottest month that humans have ever recorded since recording mm -hmm. began, and uh, more than a century ago. Wall Street suffered its worst day of 2019? as China answered Trump's threat to add 10% tariffs on another $300 billion in Chinese imports by dropping its currency to an 11-year low against the dollar. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, trade wars are, are uh, easy they're to easy win. They're easy to win. I didn't know if you knew that. They're, 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 sim they're straightforward and they're easy to win. Uh, Mark Thiessen, who works for the Washington Post for no explicable reason, he's a former Bush speechwriter and one of the leading torture pimps of the Bush administration wrote this week that there were no safe spaces or trigger warnings for young people fighting in the Warsaw uprising. That's right. Unless you fought Nazis in the Warsaw ghetto during world war two, you're a pussy who should sit down and shut up about the deer. Wow. Leader. Where did Mike Mark Thyssen yeah. serve? Uh, he served under George Bush <laughs> way, way, way <laughs> under George Bush. Yeah. Yeah, let's torture some more people. Uh, where you, I'll be behind my desk writing op eds and things like All that. Right. Oh yeah. So no, he's he's just a he's a creature. He's a he's a vole who lives in the skirting board and who should absolutely not have a job at the Washington Post, but he does. Maybe someday some scrappy reporter will figure out how all this works and tell the rest of us how it Can goes. Can I talk about the butter cow? Oh yes, <laughs> please. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal. This week yeah. is the week before it's 10 days before school starts. And that means it's time for yes. the Illinois State Fair. The Illinois State Fair, oh, which State is Fair. in Springfield, Illinois, uh, just north of us. And uh, as is. is per tradition, they have a butter cow. That is a life-size cow carved entirely from butter. It's in a very cold yes. room to keep it. Nice and cold. And they have cones around it, and the cones are made of butter, too, which is hilarious. Yeah. Um, don't touch the butter cow. <laughs> it's what they're trying to tell you. Uh, but this year, there's a new thing, Drift Class. They have virtual butter mm -hmm. cow. You can go online really? and look at the butter cow. Yes. From the, from the comfort That's of your new. own home. That's a new thing That's this new year. Thing. The virtual butter cow. Yes. So I will be sharing that at our Facebook page and, and at, uh, I'm not going to make it internet kitty, but <laughs> it'll be no. at our face. It will no. be at our Facebook page. It will be at my blog. I'll put it up at my blog. Blue gal. You know, you know who a, a true butter cow connoisseur who? is? Blue gal. Charlie Pierce. Does he love butter cows? He loves butter cows more than almost more than, more than I can't say Ireland. <laughs> more than food on a stick. He is uh, currently winging his way to Des Moines, I, I believe, believe for the Iowa yeah, State Fair. Yeah. Uh, but he was doing this sort of microscopic comparison between the Massachusetts. I think it was the Massachusetts, but I'm not sure. It was their butter uh -huh. cow, which is the Apollo 11 butter <laughs> cow, which features, which features, I believe, and again, I could probably have the state completely wrong. And I'm, I'm talking it up to Charlie being from Massachusetts. Yeah. But they have uh, a butter uh, Buzz Armstrong. Uh, I'm sorry, Buzz Aldrin and a, bu a buttered Neil Armstrong. Um, and it's all Apollo oh, 11. Wow. Now, our butter cow has a hat, so made of butter. So that's wow. about the best we can do. Uh, but he is a connoisseur of these things. And really, the Iowa butter uh, butter cow is, you know, it, they're just not putting in the effort they used to. This used to be a thing they were proud of. And I guess Iowa pride is out the window. But What um, is the deal with the hard hat on our butter cow? I, is that to... Infrastructure is that to I don't know. Infrastructure? Like, yeah. yeah, it's like infrastructure thing. Okay. But yeah, our butter cow does have a hard hat on it. So... And and our That's our a, governor passed a budget finally, and um, he did, is, and he so, unveiled the butter cow too, and that that's a good thing because you know our governor is kind of portly. I will say he that is, he is, and he so is. for him to unveil the butter cow, and having passed a budget, and having made pot legal, he's done a lot, and he's only he been governor for a little while since and January. The, um, I believe the, all the all the people who were denied back pay 
when Bruce uh-huh. Rauner was fucking the state up yeah. are starting to get their back pay now, which oh, makes us happy because I assume at least some of them are subscribers and would like to send us a little of that. Yeah, right. Well, that. and 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 spend money in Springfield. I mean, the, the state workers that are here have been really hurting. So uh, that's good. That's good for J.B. Pritzker to, with his with his. Uh, you know, he's dressed in khakis and a plaid yeah. shirt for yeah. the for the state fair. You know, that's nice too. He doesn't wear he doesn't wear fancy Chicago clothes. No, no. He I'd he like comes to talk down. about our former governor, yeah. if you don't mind. Yeah. Blago. If oh, we yeah. learn about yeah. what's happening with Blago and how they the Trump might commute his Yeah, sentence. he's he's backed off a little bit because apparently someone told him that no Democrats really hate his guts. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. so the person that told him it would make Democrats love him uh-huh. was uh Jared. Jared thought it was a great idea you know, to commute the sentence of Rod Blagojevich. And because he's a Democrat. And no, no one wants you to do that. We want that asshole to stay in jail. He's corrupt as hell. Well, I was doing shots with Jared over at Floyd's yeah. Thirst Parlor. Talking <laughs> Floyd's about, Thirst Parlor. Talking about. There is a place in Springfield called Floyd's Thirst Parlor. Yes. parlor great people by the way great pool tables on the second floor pool tables on the second floor. i know floor. the owners yes. i know the owners they're nice guys go on in they have, uh it's it's nice a guys place. and yeah. the owner also owns a barber shop which is also a bar which is amazing <laughs> so the only thing adults do in springfield is look at butter cows and drink yeah yeah occasionally <laughs> they do podcasts like this one that's their fun <laughs> um but when i was doing shots with jared at, at floyd's thirst parlor we talked about what democrats love and i was just kidding mm-hmm. i said you know what would be great if you would pardon, <laughs> if you would pardon Blago, that would be fucking amazing. Uh, Democrats were, would love you, man. They would love him you. to fall for that. And he was like, and he was, he was writing this shit down. Really, really? Oh yeah, no, no. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. And uh, other things we like in this state are if you can work in like incredibly insulting comments about Lincoln, that'd be great. We love oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, that's um, great. So he, he's kind of an idiot, and we took him he, for a lot of money. Total um, idiot. Yeah. I told him I didn't know yeah. how to shoot pool, and took him for. Geez. <laughs> God, the lease on his building in New you York. Know, if you've got any money, we could have a friendly game. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's go upstairs by pool. That sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah. And I shouldn't have taken pity on him, really. I should have I should, oh, should no. taken him for every nickel. Do you want to talk oh, about the other God. story from Illinois that's more yeah, interesting? Yeah, this is the one I want. I, well, first of all, we have to mention that a new Pentagon report blames Trump for the rise of ISIS in Syria and Iraq. Yeah. And The, uh, the Obama Pentagon. The, the Obama Pentagon. No, okay. No. And, not the Obama no. Pentagon. Well, there was someone on Twitter who said, Oh, come on, Trump's only been president for two years. Right. Right. That's right. It just, just doesn't it never stops. It never stops. It never stops. Yeah. You know, and then it's well, you know it will be. Trump's not president anymore. We don't have right. to talk about him. I it's remember be that. that. I remember that. Remember, I remember that Bush isn't president anymore, I, so we we totally stopped talking about him. Right, January twentieth, two thousand nine, at twelve oh one. Suddenly, not, that Bush isn't president. Nothing's his fault. Everyone, shut up. What about the yep. Kenyan usurper who stole the White House? Let's talk about him right. now. Right, and that, that with Michelle Malkin. This that is was Michelle Malkin. This is yeah. what will happen. We know it's coming. The question we know is, what coming. are we going to do? Burn about the it? lifeboats. Exactly. Burn the lifeboats. And All right, but talk talk to us about the Abraham Lincoln Presidential oh, Library Lord. and Museum, which we love. It is we a do. it is a tourist destination in Springfield and has a, a wonderful collection. It's a treasure of Lincoln memorabilia and actual Lincoln uh, objects and letters, yes. and it's it is an actual library. So there is uh, researchers use it frequently for uh, Lincoln research. It's the place to go for Lincoln yes. research. But uh, they made the news for another reason this week. They did. Um, they decided to climb in bed with Glenn Beck. Again, by the way, this has happened a couple and of times. And I know ago. that was not on your bingo card, people. No, no. The what? <laughs> what now? Yeah. He did what? Yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, in a couple of ways. One is that um, Mercury One is a Texas nonprofit founded by Glenn Beck. And on their website, they talk about how the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library was a partner in a recent week-long exhibit on slavery at the institution in Irving, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's not clear what artifacts they might have gotten loans from the museum. The museum sent the Gettysburg Address and other far artifacts down there. Um, it was not well planned. It was not well executed. Um, the Mercury One has also, and I'm quoting directly from an article in the Illinois Times by Bruce Rushton, who wrote a wonderful story about the professional left podcast last year. Mm -hmm. Um, And we're, we were thrilled. We we appeared in our local paper. Um, Mercury one has also provided a landing spot for former uh, 
Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library Chief Operating Officer Michael Little, who resigned last fall after he left an unattended in the old state capital, a 19th century book certifying that Lincoln, then a new lawyer, had good moral character. Um, school children had collected pennies to buy the book, and he just sort of left it laying there. And they thought, you know what? That's a lot of fucking nerve. Yeah. That's not what we want in the person in charge of the library. We should we should make him go away. And that's when Glenn Beck opened his heart and said, come work for me. Yeah. That would be lovely. Come down here. So I understand that Mercury One does some good stuff, and that's all great. But any institution that has Glenn Beck's stank on it shouldn't be anywhere near Abraham Lincoln's library or legacy or anything yep. else. Find someone else to give you money. Find someone well, else to support your your. It's positive. almost impossible. I mean, this is the this is what we're talking about. Is that the people hey. that have the money to throw around and throw around influence, and you have the rest mm -hmm. of us scrounging for five dollars, you know? And if you mm -hmm. have that imbalance, uh, they're going to go to Glenn Beck's nonprofit. Because Glenn Beck loves Money Lincoln. Wins. So then, you know, his yeah. nonprofit is going to support the Lincoln Library. And it doesn't mm -hmm. matter that he's an awful person who who uh, ravaged truth for years on television. Yeah. And then was, well, to be fair, he was a never Trumper for five minutes, just long enough to get a story about him. In the New York Times, Anna Marie right? Cox, yeah. In the New York Times about how he changed his heart and he had a change of heart. And then, great. Cool. Okay, I can play them out. I can play them out. I can string them along a little bit more. Oh, I guess I am not a never Trumper anymore. I love Donald Trump. Yeah. Here's my hat. And this is the the same dumb shit that yeah. way too many liberals fall for. Frankly, they just they they. I can understand when you're when you have no place else to go and you have your pockets are empty and a someone lifeline. offering you yes, right, a right. way out. I can understand doing it. I've taken jobs I I didn't like. I didn't want to do. I've taken jobs that were. Um, uh, beneath me in a lot of ways or were um just painful to do to keep yeah. Yeah. you know a roof over my head i've done that before i understand that i i'm never going to work for team evil but i have done jobs that i didn't like because yeah. it was necessary to pay the bills but man going to glenn beck it really is like jimmy right. stewart going to yeah. mr potter and saying yeah sure Okay, I'll take that deal. I'll take that deal. Yeah. Don't take that deal. Find some other way to do it because all you're doing is you're trading. Yeah. This is what Donna Brazil did. You're trading your credibility for a paycheck. And and the minute you do that, you're going to become yeah. their best friend. Every time anyone has anything bad to say about Fox News, Donna Brazil, she works for us. Are you insulting Donna Brazil? Donna Brazil, you know, she was head of the Democratic Party. Um, why are we're we're a, a very open and understanding organization? Again, I'm going to say it again. Go see the great hack. Go watch the great hack. You'll again. It's ex it's exactly what happened. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitties are uh, semi-famous. Oh yeah, Fred and Ginger are cats who hold the position of feline rodent abatement team <gasps> at the Phillipsburg Manor in Sleepy Hollow, New York, and they oh, have man. been in the local newspaper. They are actual working cats. Mm -hmm. Uh, and because they are working cats, Fred and Ginger definitely deserve freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you buy pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your colonial tourism attraction cat will sit on the scullery floor and demand <laughs> that the cat food they eat is only freshly poured. And you can visit Fred and Ginger at our Facebook page or website. You can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, or you can also write to both of us. And allow me to add, Fred and Ginger were sent in by a podcast listener. This, yes. I didn't just pick this up off the internet. Uh, feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. It is the season for iced coffee. Oh, yeah. Uh, so if you can afford to buy a slushy or an espresso-based cold beverage for yourself, do buy one for us. This is not charity. This is a labor of love, and it's our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details, our PayPal postal address, and Patreon, and 
GoFundMe and buy us a coffee and all of those links, including uh, merch. It's mm-hmm. all there. We have merch. And we have merch. We have both sides don't bumper stickers and T-shirts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, they're fantastic. Just go and check the them out. Line up. Line you're going to want one of those for next year for the election. You're going to want a both sides don't uh, bumper sticker or T-shirt. You're going to want one of those for sure. And, and and get them now while it's both sides don't because I have a feeling – much, 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 much larger podcasts are going to come out with a hashtag both sides do not t shirts. And, <laughs> and so get the original now. Get the original the knockoff. There you, you know, go. Is, you don't want to knock popular. off. No, nah, nobody wants that. <laughs> Please share our show on social media. And thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? You know, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties don't think Tucker Carlson is really on vacation. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGB.